talents to one, two talents to another, and one talent to the other. And as, as our Lord describes in his own words, the one with the five talents, at the time of his reckoning, at the time of his judgment, we could say, he was able to show, I made five more talents. And the one with two made two more. And we, the, one, the one didn't do anything with it. So God gives everyone a mission in this life. We all have our purpose in this life, our vocation to fulfill. And uh, we just had a cassock reception, so one more to testing grounds for the seminary. So all of us, God has given all of us something for in this life to obtain, to do, to sanctify our soul, to grow in the love of God and to win souls for heaven by our example for sure and certainly as future priests, by your words and by your, your instruction. So with these talents God given, given, give, has given to each one, even those who are uh, paralyzed in their bed all their life, they still have talents received from God, their intelligence and will, and they're to use that for the glory of God. So all of us must use what God gave us to glorify him, in whatever vocation and state of life we are in, and to use it to the full for his glory. As St. Paul says, don't glory in what you have as if it's your own, because what you have is what God has given you, and he can certainly take it away. And this happens a lot even in this life. Uh, I knew a, a healthy, strong football player. He was riding his bike, a car turned, the car, the the bike fell to the ground, he hit his head on the pavement, and he was never the same. He was mentally retarded ever since. And he could still walk, he could still somewhat talk, but he was never the same. So the talents we all have, God could take them away. So we have to use, but the greatest talent God gives us, the greatest, that's totally his gift, we have our natural gifts, intelligence, will, the body, and so forth. <coughs> and But there's the greatest gifts from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And the, most, the best and perfect gifts is the virtues. Sanctifying grace in the soul, the gift of the Catholic faith to believe all that God has revealed, and all the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, the twelve fruits of the Holy Ghost, these are directly the action of God in the soul. And God gives these gifts to sanctify the soul, that we really grow in the love of God. Now, last year, a huge storm just hit this house after we had Mass here. And uh, it didn't hit the house, thank God. The angels protected the house. But everything around the house was just leveled, all the huge trees. A massive storm and the family here is still picking up the pieces still cutting up the wood and uh, the trees are still down they've been working for over a year on it and the trees are still uh, all over the place so think what happens in the soul that is devastated by sin one mortal sin just knocks everything down kills the life of the soul and uh, it leaves the soul completely devastated and lifeless and worthy to be burnt in the fires like the dead wood. But what, what God does to the soul by his grace and with confession, and they should frequently make confession and at least once a week for clerics. And uh, what happens with the soul in confession, all that is washed away. And the, 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 the rubble on the soul is cleaned off. And the soul receives all its merits back that it, was, that it has lost by mortal sin. And Christ replants and regrows the graces in the soul, the virtues in the soul. So the order of nature teaches us a lot about the order of grace. And not that the order of grace depends on the order of nature, but the order of nature does reflect. And as St. James says, the farmers, when they plant their seeds 
It's not like our age of video games and buttons and you got the results and consequences. But the farmer plants the seeds, he has to water the field, fertilize it, he has to pull out the weeds, and he doesn't see the fruits of his labors when, for many months after, towards the end of summer, right? So his, his work is patient, and it's, it's, it's persevering. And so it is more with the soul. Many people embracing the, the, the conversion of their life, going to God, I'm going to live for heaven, I'm going to live to glorify God. <coughs> we live in an age of quick results, so we get impatient. But God doesn't work that way all the time. We have to labor to clean <coughs> off, pull out the weeds of our soul. We have to plant and foster the virtue. We have to really work at it with prayer and patience and persevering. And these things don't happen overnight. And that's why there used to be ages in the religious life. It's a faster, speedier way towards heaven. And even in the monastic life, even in the religious life, it takes many years to pull out the vices, to, to really grow the true virtues of the love of God, of virtue, generosity, patience, humility, and all the many other virtues that all hinge on the four main virtues, the karma virtues. Prudent, justice, fortitude, temperance. These are the hinges, cardinals, on which hinge many other virtues. But the, all the virtues have life by the sanctifying grace, which is the presence of the Blessed Trinity, the sunlight of the Blessed Trinity in your soul. So this is the, the real world. This is the real world that Christ died for, to, to gain the territory of souls. He loves your soul. There was a girl that asked a Muslim sheikh, whatever they are called, he asked a Muslim leader, where does it say in the Quran that God loves us? Allah loves us. And he was stumped. He couldn't give an answer. But we read everywhere in the scripture, we read everywhere in Christ's words, how much he loves each soul. And then he died for each soul. And this is what the Mass is about. He gives his sacrifice to the soul, to fructify our soul, to make us thirst for the vision of the Trinity, and to really grow the virtues in the garden of the soul. And this is what our Lord wants. He wants this. This is his will. Go and bear fruit, first in our soul, and then the good works towards our neighbor, and lead them towards God. So let's ask the Virgin Mary. She was that perfect and good soil that never had weeds, never had thorns, never had a storm of mortal sin come through and destroy everything and start again. Her soul was, from the moment of her conception, it was a fertile garden enclosed, growing full of the best of all virtues and the fragrant flowers that are so pleasing to the Blessed Trinity. That's the that's the soul of the Virgin Mary. <coughs> we want to ask her, we want to turn to her and ask her help to help us to really use the talents God gave us for the glory of God, to the best of our ability, for his honor, for his glory, for his kingship. Really, that's, that's all that matters. All the universe is made for the glory of the Blessed Trinity. And we are happiest when we contribute in the best we can in the way God wants to do that. All glory and honor to the most blessed Trinity. We sing this often throughout the divine office. All the glory, all the honor, all the kingship, all the divinity, all the praise and adoration to the blessed Trinity. And that has to be the song. See the birds? They have a bird, these birds, hear that bird singing? It's not like the rooster, it's not like the cackling of a chicken. It's a beautiful melody. <coughs> St. Francis de Sales says God gives some of these birds beautiful melodies to show the glory of God. He wants to sing his glory by our thoughts, by our love, by our affection, by all our duty, all our uh, inner soul, and our external actions, by uh, the adoration given to God, by kneeling, by the sign of the cross, by the bows of his head, by the charity towards our neighbor. This is how we glorify God. O Mary, conceive without sin. Grant mercy. 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 O Mary, conceive without sin. Grant merc